Perhaps he's not as sick as I thought. The Smurfs, to my mind, are the foundation of all our <laughs> it's, it's really not that complicated. Papa Smurf, right here, he is the icon for me and I think for all of us. Why, you'll ask. Sure. Well, just look at these houses. I mean, they are pretty much perfect as far as architecture goes and for the people living in them. They are perfectly made for the Smurfs. Let's think about it for a second. They're perfect proportions for who they are intended for. They're made out of an eco-material. They're absolutely perfect. Grow out of the earth. Right? This is what we talk about every day, what you probably talk about every day. Let's get back to the basics, people. Mushrooms, right? <laughs> They're scalable. You can have them just about anywhere in any country. It doesn't really matter where, when. Uh, they're prefab. Again, on the bandwagon, before a bandwagon even existed. And all for the little blue person. And so, let's look at a little bit of the details of what it's like to be <coughs> mushroom living. As you can see, mushroom living is actually quite nice because you can actually say goodnight to each other from house to house without even, you know, intercoms or cell phones. But at the same time, when you close those windows, they're insulated enough for you to be able to do some work and not bother anyone. And of course, there's plenty of other ways to look at, to look at this. As you can see, the cap protects the Smurf house from the environment, the rain, the sun. I mean, look at the gills, a vertically thin, thin radiating plates on the underside of the cap. Uh, it's really a wonderful construction. You can see that there's two floors. You can see that the fresh water supply and the drainage come from the same place. How economical. Uh, of course, there's one thing that it's not that great for. It's not that great in high uh, The mushrooms do tend to come up from the ground. Uh, but apart from that, it's pretty perfect. So, what is really the real-world design impact of Smurf architecture? Well, as the people in Wales know full well, uh, it's the, the grass huts are absolute uh, copies of what Papa Smurf has done. But so what is the societal impact of Smurf architecture? Well, of course, urban sprawl is uh, one of the first that come to mind. The idea of all these mushrooms gathered around a tree. Well, we've seen that before, haven't we, uh, in urban sprawl. Uh, and we're getting better at those, uh, making even more Smurf-like. Uh, another thing that's also uh, a huge impact is the eco-building. And sustainable design, of course, started uh, about 25 years ago with this book by E.F. Schumacher titled Small is Beautiful, right? Smurfs again. It's unbelievable. Uh, of course, sustainable design does not start with, uh, with Smurfs. It started not by adding, but, I, but by, by subtracting from the earth. And that's what happens in these villages. Um, I'm not sure where. Um, and of course, you have these uh, houses. How could you not see the, um, the smurfitude, if you will? Uh, uh, and now we're trying to create our own bubbles, our own mushrooms under which we can recreate a smurf world and all be happy. Of course, with every pro, there's a con, and there are unfortunate interpretations of smurf architecture. I would say what's happening in Dubai right now, uh, you know, not that great, great opportunities, but there are things happening, such as creating a world uh, out of islands which, again, uh, we can do without. The, this, is, this is not the idea that Papa Smurf put forward. The idea of creating your own mushroom cap to put your own luxury <laughs> villa on. I'm sorry, but that's not what was envisioned to begin with. Uh, what was envisioned was this. Simplicity, economy, wisdom for a little blue person. And what we try to do at the apartment is get inspired by the Smurfs. And so one of the things that we've done is, first of all, borrow the fantastically blue color. And uh, we reacted to this uh, idea of community uh, with a project we built uh, this year, last year, in, in Brooklyn, when a uh, developer came to us um, who had just bought basically an entire block and said, what can we do here? We thought, we thought, instead of developing one building per one building, which would have been easy enough to do, we thought, Papa Smurf. <laughs> and we thought, let's develop a community that is all about, well, just that, community. Try to grab back, 
try to get back the idea of community from the internet where it seems to have evolved and take it back into the real world where we no longer ask our neighbors for sugar and create a community based on the Smurfs ideals. And we've called that community hello after the first thing that you say when you get to know somebody. So what's hello? Hello is a place in Brooklyn right here that was built and finished and sold. The idea was to unite Instead of putting all the amenities that seem to be more and, popular, more and more popular these days, and all under one roof, we decided that each building should have its own amenity. And we're talking about six different buildings. One with a pool, one with a screening room, one with a gym, one with a, a, a kid's uh, creative play area, one with a game room, one with a business and entertainment center. And the idea was that we would share all those, amenity, all those uh, amenities uh, between all the people that lived in all buildings, being able to get them together, being able to share hands, each finding their inner smurf. Very, very important in architecture today. Even the brochure, trying to look at everything as a group, as a community-based initiative, as opposed to selling square footage. Even on the other side of the, uh, of the brochure, being able to write the person's name uh, so that we would get personal, so that we would get intimate with the person that we're selling real estate to. And all this, thanks to who? Well, thanks to our little bearded guy, Papa Smurf. And that's all we have for you today.